Good day everyone! We are going to examine and talk about the anatomy and the physiology of the female reproductive tract of the cow. The reproductive system of a cow consists of the following major organs, starting from the outside inward, which are the vulva, including the labia majora and the labia minora, vagina, cervix, uterine body, uterine horns, oviducts, and ovaries. The said system's functions are to produce gametes, called eggs, secreting sex hormones such as estrogen, providing a site for fertilization, gestating a fetus if fertilization occurs, giving birth, and breastfeeding the young after birth. In the external genitalia of the cow, we have been here the vulva, specifically the labia majora and the labia minora. Vulva is the external part of the reproductive tract, consists of both the labia majora and the labia minora. The thickened folds of the skin of this structure are sensitive to changes in estrogen. It also provides extra protection to the vagina, passage of urine, opening for mating, and serves as part of the birth canal. When there is swelling and redness of the vulva, this is due to the increased blood flow and can be useful in estrus detection when coupled with other signs. When we stretch out the vulva part, it shows the clitoris, suburethral diverticulum, and the urethral opening. Clitoris is the small body of highly innervated erectile tissue located in the posterior extremity of the ventral vaginal floor. It is the homologue of the penis. It contains thousands of nerve endings that make it an extremely sensitive organ. Suburethral diverticulum is an outpacking of tissue located just beneath the urethra that forms a blind pouch with probably no functional significance. The function of the suburethral diverticulum is unknown, but sometimes inexperienced inseminators can position the insemination rod or pipette into this blind pouch. Urethral opening lies dorsal to the suburethral diverticulum of the cow and the urethra is lined by a layer of cells called epithelium. The urethra's main responsibility is to let urine pass from the bladder out of the body. An incision was made from the posterior of the vagina to the anterior part, near the cervix, to reveal the other parts of the reproductive tract. The picture here reveals the vestibule, urinary bladder, and the vagina, the anterior and the posterior parts. Vestibule is the part of the vagina cranial to the clitoris, extending to and including the urethral opening. It is common to both the urinary and the reproductive systems. Urinary bladder lies below the reproductive tract and is connected at the urethral opening of the vaginal wall. Its function is to collect and store urine from the kidneys until it can be excreted via urination. Vagina is the female copulatory organ that connects the external genitalia to the cervix. It is 4 to 5 inches long. This is where the semen is deposited during natural mating. Cells in the vagina and cervix secretes mucus 
which lubricates the truck during insemination. As you can see here, the opening also shows the cervix. Cervix is a structure consisting of dense connective tissue and often described as having a turkey neck feel when palpated. The cervix connects the uterus to the vagina. This is also a landmark when manually palpating because it feels very different than any other structure in the reproductive tract. It is responsible in producing mucus during estrus and it is sealed during pregnancy to prevent any pathogens from entering and harming the developing fetus and it serves as a birth canal during parturition. Next, we have incised the cervix from the external cervical os to the internal cervical os to reveal the parts inside it. The incision shows the parts inside the cervix, which are the external cervical os, annular rings, which have 3 to 4 rings, and the internal cervical os. Fornix vagina forms a crypt or pocket in the cervix that protrudes in the anterior vagina. Spermatozoa are deposited in the fornix vagina by the bull during natural cervix. The fornix vagina is composed of columnar epithelial cells that, as in the cervix, secrete copious quantities of mucus during estrus. External cervical os is the boundary between the cervix and the vagina. Os means opening. Annular rings, or also known as cervical rings, forms an interlocking finger-like projections known as interdigitating prominences. A cow have three to four rings. Internal cervical os is the boundary between the cervix and the uterine body. An incision is made to the uterine body to reveal the parts inside it. The incision shows the parts inside the cervix. We have the internal cervical OS, the caruncles which are the button-like or seed-like structure inside the uterine body. We also have the perimetrium. Following the cervix, the uterine body remains a single tube. It functions as a common area of the two uterine horns that follows. And when they're performing artificial insemination, the uterine body is the optimal point of sperm deposition. Caruncles are the prominent structures on the endometrium and found on the lining of the uterus, particularly in the mucosa layer. Perimetrium is the outermost layer. The uterine horn is cut open to reveal its internal parts.
What we have here are the parts of the uterine horn. We can see the mesometrium and the carangos. The uterine horn supports sperm transportation to the oviducts and are the site for fetal growth and development during pregnancy. Each uterine horn has structures along the inner lining called carangles. These serve as a site of attachment of the cotyledons, embryo, or the main areas of exchange between the mother and the fetus. Endometrium is the innermost layer of the uterus. It has many simple tubular glands whose secretions help establish an environment in the uterus that is ideal for the growth of the embryo. Mesometrium is the broad ligament that supports the uterus. Here are the parts of the oviduct. We have the uterotubule junction, isthmus, ampullary isthmic junction, ampulla, and nasosalphinx. The oviducts are connected to the ends of each uterine horn and function as a bridge between the uterine horn and the ovary. The uterotubule junction is the transition between the uterus and the oviduct. The isthmus, in terms of its mucosa, it is convoluted. The muscularis is considered to be well developed which gives the isthmus a hard feel when touched on the external part. Ampullary isthmic junction is the junction between the ampulla and the isthmus. This part is where the fertilization occurs in the ovido. Ampulla comprises about half of the length of the ovido. Its mucosa is highly convoluted and well developed, and its diameter is larger than the isthmus. Ampulla functions to move the oocyte to be fertilized. Mesosalphings is the broad ligament supports the ovido. Aside from the mentioned parts of the ovido, we also have here the infundibulum and fimbria. The infundibulum is a funnel-shaped end of the ovido and at the edges of it. A finger-like projections called fimbria or fimbriae are found. At ovulation, the fimbria and the infundibulum will catch the ovulated egg and transport it to the base of the infundibulum through the ostium and into the ampulla. These are the external parts of the ovary. We have the germinal epithelium, which is the outermost layer of the ovary, and the mesovarium, a broad ligament that surrounds and supports the ovary. In the ovary, we can see the corpus luteum, and the primary, secondary, and tertiary follicles. Primary follicles, the nucleus is surrounded by a single layer of cuboidal follicle cells. The secondary follicles is composed of multiple layers of follicle cells. The tertiary follicle is differentiated by the presence of the antrum with differentiated layers of follicle cells. The corpus luteum, which means a yellow body, is an endocrine gland with a limited lifespan that produces progesterone. This is the incest corpus luteum of the ovary. An incision was made to the ovary to reveal its internal parts.
incision shows the parts inside the ovary. We can see the tunica albuginea, follicle which can be found inside the ovary, medulla, and cortex. Typical ovary is divided into cortex and medulla. Medulla is mainly composed of connective tissue and the blood vessels and the nerves enter into the ovary through the hilus. We also have transverse medulla to the cortex. Cortex is the main functional area of the ovary that performs gametogenic functions where the oocyte will develop via the follicles and endocrine functions where the hormones progesterone and estrogen are produced. Tunica albuginea is the layer of connective tissue under the germinal epithelium that surrounds the surface of the ovary. It is also analogous to the connective tissue covering the tissues. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,